Hello there, my radar tropical weather expert, Dr. David Riglicki here, and I wanted to talk to you something that's very near and dear to my heart, hurricanes. Now there's absolutely no way we can talk about the entirety of a hurricane's life cycle in one video. They're just too complicated. We have to talk about things like where do they form? When do they form? How do they form? Why do they form? Where do they intensify? How do they intensify? Why do they intensify? What happens at landfall? What happens when they recurve out of the tropics into the mid-latitudes? And there's probably even more than I'm forgetting. So there's no way we can cover all that. So in this particular video, we're gonna be talking about two aspects of hurricanes, climatology and cyclogenesis. Now, the first image we're gonna take a look at is a spaghetti plot of all hurricane tracks starting from the beginning of last century. And guess what? There's a lot of them in both the Northern Atlantic and the Eastern Pacific. Now amidst the cacophony of all of these tracks, there actually is a signal embedded in here that we're interested in. But this signal occurs in a very specific region, starting in the Lesser Antilles going eastward to the west coast of Africa. This is known as the Main Development Region, or the MDR. Now the MDR provides a very unique situation in the Atlantic for tropical cyclogenesis. There are four main ingredients that the MDR provides. They are sea surface temperatures warmer than 26 and a half degrees Celsius or 80 degrees Fahrenheit, high values of low level relative humidity. So you need about 70% relative humidity up to 15,000 feet. And you may be asking yourself, hey, you know, isn't it warm and moist near the ocean surface? And the answer is yeah, usually. Uh, is it warm and moist up to 10,000, 15,000 feet? Not necessarily. Now the last two are more dynamic. That's low, low values of vertical wind shear and high values of divergence at 40,000 feet. Uh, they're a little bit beyond the scope of this video. I'll just say when it comes to vertical wind shear, that's a measure of the winds at low levels in the atmosphere uh, and winds at high levels in the atmosphere. And it's the measuring the difference. And if this value is large, generally what happens, it pushes the hurricane over. Hurricanes don't like that. The other one is divergence at upper levels. Uh, if there's divergence, winds are expanding. That's good. That usually means rising motion. If winds are converging at upper levels, that usually means there's sinking motion below. Hurricanes don't like that. Now, what's also special about the MDR is that a, there's a special fifth ingredient when it comes to tropical cyclogenesis, and that is a pre-existing disturbance because hurricanes just don't, you know, spontaneously, well, usually don't spontaneously form. So these pre-existing disturbances in the Atlantic, in this particular region of the Atlantic, are known as African easterly waves. Now, these are not the waves you're going to break your surfboard out for. These are atmospheric waves. And the question is, where do these things come from? So if we go one more continent to the east, we're on Africa, which surprisingly, this is where African easterly waves come from. But what it actually causes the waves? Well, there's a very special meteorological phenomenon known as the African easterly jet, which stretches from the Ethiopian highlands westward to Senegal, to the Atlantic Ocean. This jet lives at about 20,000 feet, and it forms due to a temperature and moisture difference between the tropical rainforests in Africa and the very hot, dry desert to the north, the Sahara. So as a result, there's this jet that stretches the width of the continent. Now this jet, it's not a straight shot. You know, there are undulations, there are wobbles, there are waves that occur in this jet. And if you get enough convection and rainfall with these uh, waves, they can actually sustain themselves once the jet ends, and these things can propagate into the Atlantic. Now, what these waves provide are a couple things. First, they provide, they're essentially a crib. They provide the initial background circulation for uh, convection and rainfall. And the other thing that these waves do is they can protect the forming hurricane from some of the harsher environmental conditions like vertical wind shear and uh, low values of relative humidity, dry air. Now, this doesn't happen all year round. Obviously, we don't get hurricanes in the wintertime in the Atlantic. So there is a time dependence and a geographical dependence. So the first thing we're gonna look at here to understand these is what is called the campfire plot from the National Hurricane Center, which is a measure of hurricane uh, frequency or actually total tropical cyclone frequency and activity over the length of hurricane season. So starting in May to about August, this uh, stays relatively low, but it ramps up in August peaks in September and then decays as we get into later fall and then on into winter. Now, if we look at this spatially early in the season, June, July, most of your hurricane activity is on the Gulf Coast and up the Eastern seaboard. 
But as we move towards August and September, you will start seeing more activity in the farther tropical Atlantic. And, and what you're seeing in the middle Atlantic here, that is usually from these storms forming in the MDR and then recurving back to the north. And as you progress farther in the season, then you'll see that this basically shuts off and hurricane activity is once again in close near land, near the Gulf of Mexico and the Eastern seaboard. So with that, I'd like to close and I would say, you know, I hope I've introduced a little bit more about hurricane climatology and hurricane cyclogenesis. And if you enjoy this, hey, you know, please follow us on social media. If you're watching us on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell so you get notifications. And be sure to leave a comment. We will read them. If you want to see more videos like this, if you want me to explain a little bit more about tropical cyclones and hurricanes, I'd be glad to. So once again, this is Dr. David Riglicki saying thank you for watching and reminding you to be smart, be safe, be well. Until next time. Follow My Radar on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download My Radar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa, Xbox, and Windows.